Good morning. Welcome to Monday morning video on Warrior 613. I'm Jason. Welcome back. It's been two weeks. Uh, I've been taking some time to, to try to get some of the topics that I'm going to be talking about together, um, getting some final things um, for that we're wanting to do um, here on the site and uh, also with the YouTube channel uh, I used to upload. So what I want to talk about today, uh, I actually got to speak uh, on a, uh, deliver a message um, at a church in North Carolina um, last Sunday. I uh, was able to deliver, the name of it was to tell us that, uh, which were the, the last words of Jesus means it is finished. Uh, and the message dealt with when are we finished? Uh, it came about when I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Uh, the number of people that came to me immediately, uh, and I mean within days, um, and wanted to know when I was going to quit working. Wanted to know, you know, if I was kind of setting up the, okay, well, you don't need to get too involved with things at, at this point um, because of stress, because of, um, and it really, it threw me off. It, it took a while for me to, to think about that. Um, and really what happened through all of that is I came back to how much we, we think in societal terms. Things that have crept up, um, not just in the Christian church, but it's just in our day-to-day -day life. Whether it be agnostic, um, other denominations, other religions, um, and it really, it really kind of caught me off guard. Um, when I look at Jesus' life, until he took the sour drink while he was on the cross, it was the first time that he laid his head down and uttered the words, it is finished. So why do we as Christians look at it as we've got a certain time here on, on earth. We do have a certain time here on earth, but why do we cut our short? Why do we not live until the very end of our life fulfilling uh, what God has called us to do? I referenced a, a few um, scenarios um, in my message uh, about people that, that I was aware of um, or that I was familiar with um, that had really embodied uh, living out until it is finished on God's terms, not man's. Um, because we view things through through one of two lenses, either God's word or man's word. And too many times man's word is creeping in um, unknowingly. Uh, people uh, very innocently are just moving about in a different direction, not scripturally based. So uh, I referenced uh, three people. One was my, my wife's grandfather, Clarence Honshu, who uh, ministered uh, to the people of Defusky Island. Uh, he was a pastor, but also to minister to the people of Defusky Island. Uh, they called him Dr. Voodoo. Um, I've heard more stories about him on, uh, on local uh, uh, ETV here in South Carolina. Uh, the stuff that was mentioned or, or books that were written about the history, history of Defusky Island. Um, they called him Dr. Voodoo because they weren't really sure what he was going to or what he was talking about. Um, but he spent that, that time up until his, you know, his death ministering to people. Um, I think he, he spent his uh, life and I think he, he pastored his last uh, sermon uh, about three weeks before his death. Um, I look at my, my grandfather, uh, Doug uh, Rutland. Um, he was a bivocational pastor and church planner and he he spoke his his uh, last message two weeks before his death. His wish was to always die while he was preaching or either at a uh, uh, gospel uh, singing, and uh, so he didn't die preaching, but he died in the front row of a gospel singing, um, where he wanted to be all the way up until God called him home. Um, now the third one is one that um, I know uh, through people um, and her story um, has permeated um, uh, news not just regionally but uh, but across the country um, and hopefully across the world before it's over. Uh, a young lady named Jenna Bodiford who 
um, got a cancer diagnosis very young um, and she passed away as a freshman uh, in high school most students at that point um, are trying to, to gather every little bit of what they can experience in life at the end and she spent the the last couple of weeks of her life planning her funeral service uh, she decided she wanted a um, she wanted it to be more of a uh, worship service than a, a funeral service and she wanted to have it at her high school uh, which was allowed and 33 students accepted Christ because of Jenna's effort all the way until it is finished um, for that to be um, for that to carry on she took 33 people with her um, to the kingdom and at the end of the day that's what we're called to do um, regardless um, I, I was able to have the distinct honor of, of participating in a, a CrossFit workout um, this past Saturday for um, a man that I, I'm lucky to, in, to consider and call a friend, uh, Will Martin. Um, and I still hear, hear stories from people in the area um, about things that Will did during his life. Uh, very unassuming, uh, was not boastful, was not loud, uh, but carried out what God's call for his life was until the very end. Um, that should be our wish, um, not that we can ride off into the sunset at some point um, and just be comfortable um, in what we're called to do. Um, and this is something I, you know, I still struggle with. Uh, you know, it's one of those that we always want to find a reason. Okay, God, um, you really wouldn't expect me to do this um, or to go and do something else. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, that's happening to me at this point right now as well. Um, a very strong burden from, from God to go and um, uh, answer a calling that I think that he has placed on me. Uh, with a friend uh, in the plan of a new church, uh, Mosaic Church of Anderson here in South Carolina. Um, usually people want to know, well, you know what was wrong with, with the other church. I love my church that I'm at, but it's one of those things that God has put a very um, specific set of, uh, I won't say obstacles, but I'll say steps in my path. Um, and those steps um, lead to another um, you know, to the next thing and then one to the next. And um, we just have to kind of step out in faith each time. Um, and so trying to take what I have been uh, so fortunate for God to show me um, and take it out to as many places as I can. Um, and so uh, actually a book that I've been, uh, been reading a lot, The Grand Weaver by Ravi Zacharias, is an unbelievable book about how God shapes um, our lives um, or, or our path through the events of our lives. Um, and that's one of the things that people struggle with. I, I work with a lot of college students and they struggle with not pursuing the path, but just understanding what the path is. People like to get on college students a lot in this generation and I give them a hard time as I, I joke around with them, but uh, this generation is willing to go. We've got to help them decipher that path. And I think that's probably uh, one of the biggest things is, is not uh, decoding a path for them, but showing them where to search for, uh, where to search to, to find the path that God calls for our life. Um, and people of all walks of life, uh, people that are in different places, in different um, in different uh, settings and we need to have we need to, to find ways to build those relationships um, because until it is finished we're called Matthew 28 go and make disciples of all nations um, so until it's finished you know to tell us die we're not allowed to to let up thank you love you guys have a great week I'll see you soon